Hey, what's up, everybody? It's your boy Chris here. Another beautiful episode of Financipation, where I talk about financial emancipation for the uh, our community and basically just kind of advancing everything for as far as financial literacy and things of that nature. I typically talk about uh, 401ks, 403bs, uh, 529s, that kind of stuff. I typically talk about basically financial stuff. But for this one, I wanted to do a little differently. Happy Valentine's Day. And I wanted to kind of talk about how finding the right person, marrying the right woman, and finding the right partner basically allows you to pretty much build generational wealth and how it does that. So hi everyone, happy Valentine's Day. I am Reba, this is my amazing husband, Chris, so thanks for having me on today. <laughs> yeah, 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 I want you guys to meet her, so a beautiful woman, a great person. Yeah, so um, we just wanted to, like Chris mentioned before, talk about uh, relationships and how it affects uh, finances and the importance of it, because at the end of the day, the family unit is one of the most important things. So we're just gonna hop right into it. Uh, some people have sent us, uh, a couple of people have sent us some questions that they are interested in uh, getting answered and uh, they wanted us to address. So we're going to hop right into it. The first question is, how did we meet? <laughs> All right, I will, uh, I guess I'll start with this one. Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> so uh, full disclosure, guys, I am a believer. I believe in Jesus Christ. Uh, I left the church, period. I left it for a couple years. And um, for all the praying mothers out there, when the Bible says, um, the Bible basically goes into detail as far as training up a child and the way that he should go, so when he's old, he will not depart from it. I am one of those kids. I left the church for a couple years, and uh, basically I got out there, and I started realizing that the relationships that I was having, the friends that I thought I had, and the people that I was meeting, it wasn't going the way that I wanted it to go professionally, spiritually, or whatever. Uh, and definitely not from a dating perspective. So um, basically I talked to God, and he was like, you need to come back to me. And if you come back to me, you need to get involved with the ministry at church. So at the time I left the shy, um, I ended up taking a position in Orlando because I kind of needed to just completely get out of what I was doing and where I was at. And I uh, walked in the church one day and saw this young lady right here. And uh, yeah, that was that. <laughs> but it's important to know that that's where we met. That's not where we started dating. <laughs> um, so that's where we met, not, not where we dated. And uh, we were uh, involved in a ministry called Bible Bowl. I was on the senior youth team and you were on the young adult team and uh, what was interesting is that there is an age gap between us and one thing that was really amazing about Chris is that he never crossed that line you know what I'm saying he never crossed that line he was always respectful and always there to just give positive mentorship yeah, advice when I first saw Reba I assumed she was a little younger because the girl she was with like they were only about 15 or 16 so I was just like let me sit back and kind of see how old she is and I found out she was 16 so I never crossed that line Nope, and um, fast forward to my senior year of college. It was the fall, winter, around that time that uh, out of the blue, I get this text message at, at <laughs> six o'clock in the morning. I'm getting ready for my day uh, saying, hey, Reba, how are you doing? And out of the blue, it's a text from uh, Chris. And at this point in time, I'm like, we haven't spoken in years. You know, last time I saw you was probably like four years, like three and a half years before that. And, uh, you know, out of the blue, I get this message and then we start talking about different things. And it, it was very clear to me that he was interested in potentially dating because for anyone who knows my husband knows he's a very direct person. So he was very direct in the way he spoke to me. And I was like, well, finally, a guy who isn't afraid to speak his mind. Um, and then we spoke for pretty much the entire day. The day ended off with a phone call or a FaceTime. It was, it was, it was a FaceTime. <laughs> I, I spent eight hours texting her all day and I don't play that. I don't get catfished. I date, I've been around. I know I don't the dating game very well. So I was like, okay, we've been texting all day, call, FaceTime. And when she picked up the phone, I was just like, wow. So um, basically, that was that. We texted all day, and um, I was like, you know what? I want to start. Uh, I want to start dating this one. I want to start seeing her. So we started calling after that, and I guess a couple two years later, here we are. Yep, exactly. It was history after that. Uh, so next question: When did you know you'd end up getting married? You go first. Uh, okay, cool. Um, I basically was a single guy in Miami. I was a single guy in Chicago. I was a single guy in a couple cities. So I dated a lot. And um, not to say there are no quality women out here, but I just flat out was not meeting a lot of women that were raised to be wives. When I met Reba and talked to Reba, it, I immediately knew, okay, this is a different type of woman. Um, 
And I immediately knew, okay, this woman was basically raised to basically be a wife. And as a result, I knew literally within the first week of talking to Reba that I was probably <laughs> going to marry her. Seriously, fellas. And anybody that's actually dated knows this, that you know basically, guys, when you meet the girl, the right one, you say, okay, this is a good girl. I'm not going to play the same stupid games. I'm not going to basically put her through the ringer. I'm not going to waste her time. When I met Reba, um, at, when she was a college senior, I said, okay, the woman that basically she is, the woman she's become, this is a wife, and because this is a wife, I'm going to act accordingly. Because I knew within the first week or so of her start talking, I was going to marry her. Whether she knew that or not, I had to still put in the work. I did not know that. Um, for me, I didn't really know when we would have uh, ended up getting married. But what I did know is that we both were marriage-minded. It was something we spoke about and entered into dating and courtship with that knowledge. I say we're both looking to get married. Let's see if we're compatible to do this. What I do know is that... If we were dating for like two years and there still wasn't any ring shopping, we um, he wasn't talking about marriage anymore, or like marrying me, I wasn't going to waste my time. But um, we dated for about a year and al almost a shy of a year and a half before Chris put, proposed and we got married. So you would say ladies, don't let a guy date you for two years if he's not talking about marriage? I mean, I will say, I will say this. Make sure, make sure you have that discussion. That uh, are, are you looking for marriage? Yes. Do you want to marry me? Do you want, do, do, do you want to marry me? And fellas, ask that question. Ladies, ask that question as well. Because the person could want to get married, but you're not exactly the one they want to get married to. So definitely have that discussion. The two years, I would say. I mean, if you're in college, I think it's a little bit different, but if you're dating somebody throughout your college career and you graduate, there should be some, you know, talk of marriage very soon because we just spent four years together in college. Something should be leading up to that um, when we graduate. So um, definitely, I, I wasn't sure, but it, it's kind of impressive. And I, I feel I feel like yeah, flutters. I, 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 was out, I, I, I was out there. I know what I know what's in these happy hours. I know what's in the singles ministries, mm -hmm. the churches. When you meet her, fellas, you know, don't waste yeah. the girl's time. Seriously, seriously, you know. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Next question. And this is probably like my favorite one. Uh, what are some of the biggest securities in marriage for each person? I'll go first. I have three points, much more that I want to talk about, but only three that I'm talking about today. Um, it's the permanence of marriage in knowing that, uh, in knowing that, you know, boyfriend and girlfriend, you guys can break up and you guys go to your own houses, your jobs and whatever. When you're married, if you're upset with your spouse, you still have to go lay down in the same bed as them. You know, if you're upset with your spouse, you still have to come home to the same house. And I think that just makes you work even harder for the marriage and know that, hey, listen, I married you for a reason. I loved you. I saw something in you and we have to work towards uh, getting this done. And there, that's why it's just a permanence to it. Secondly, there's the protection component. As a woman, I mean, Chris doesn't expect me to get up if there's a bump in the night. No, not at all. You know, <laughs> Chris is going to go check that out. You know, my husband, your husband is going to go check it out. And he is literally trained, um, you know, in martial arts and, um, and handgun and concealed weapons, I should say. You know, he's literally trained to do so. And that puts me at ease knowing that my husband can physically protect us, but also emotionally protect me as well and um, have that, uh, you know, cocoon of marriage, knowing that I'm, I'm growing old, we're growing old together, and we have that protection. Uh, and lastly, I think is most important, especially for, for me, is having that healthy family unit. Because we are expecting our first baby, and I always wanted to have kids within the sanctity of marriage. And uh, I know... I always wanted to have that healthy nuclear family where mom and dad are present, where you, we can pre present uh, a healthy, a healthy example for our children, and let them know, hey, listen, you don't have to be alone. Um, so that was really important for me to not be a baby mama out just out there in these streets. I, I mean, it's just, the, it's just the honesty of the situation. I'm, like I, 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 I'm, I'm like just that. being completely honest, and I, don't take this as you know, judging other people or the choices that they make in life, that's different. But like I always say is, 
there are consequences, good and bad, for every single decision that we make in life. And uh, yeah. <laughs> All right, I would say some of the security. Um, my wife touched on a lot of them. Uh, fellas, you know what it's like basically to try to juggle. You know what it's like, to, quote unquote, to be out here breaking hearts. One of the most beautiful things about marriage is you have one woman that you know has your back regardless. If I get hurt at work, my wife has my back. I've been in surgery twice during our marriage. She was the one basically there for me or whatever. Um, if something happens to me or whatever, I know my wife has my back. Uh, from a mental standpoint, Reba, she challenges me. She pushes me to read books. She pushes me basically to become a better man. She pushes me to basically say, Chris, you did this wrong. You should approach it this way. From a physical standpoint, my wife is a certified personal trainer. She trains lots of people. So uh, she pushes me to basically to maintain my health and to stay in shape. From a spiritual perspective, my wife and I are both believers. She pushes me basically to become a better man in that respect. We push each other. We push each other. So to me, um, one thing I love about being married is that you basically form a holy union as far as you're going to help this individual is going to basically push me towards being a better man. And the last thing I'll say is I always wanted to be a father, but I never wanted to be a baby daddy because I saw the hellish effects that did to people, mm -hmm. both from a family standpoint, as also from a financial standpoint with my friends, with my um, and cousins and things of like that nature. I never wanted that. So one thing I love about being a father and not a baby daddy is that I know for a fact I'm going to be another black man basically in this world who's raising his son to basically um, become the best version of himself inside the um, example and institution of marriage. And I think that's something in our community that a lot more of our kids need to see. So a healthy family. A healthy family. So yep. that, that's what I would say to that. Yep. And um, like I said, we can talk for hours on end about that. But those are just a few of the biggest securities of marriage for us. And the next question is, did you create boundaries to protect your marriage? And the answer is yes. What person that wanted me? Uh, you, you go ahead. All right, cool. So, uh, yes, uh, we're both attractive, young, viral, healthy people. We both have multiple businesses. I'm in a senior management position in my nine to five and from my five to nines. Um, I'm constantly talking to uh, people, attractive people, whatever, in regards to personal training things, in regards to website development, in regards to finances and stuff like that. And as a guy who, like I said, who's dated then the whole thing or whatever, you know when, you, when a woman is crossing that line between she's asking questions and she's trying to get at you. And um, as a married man, basically, you get to know those boundaries and say, all right, I know where this is going and I'm good. I got a beautiful woman with my back and I'm not gonna mess that up. So you have to know your boundaries. I'll also say this, as a believer, keep your eyes focused on that. You don't necessarily have to believe in Jesus Christ or whatever, but if you keep your eyes focused on basically up there, it's gonna kind of help you with everything down here. And the reason why I say that is because you know basically where you're weak. You know basically where you fall short. And if you keep your, your eyes focused on a greater and a higher power, it makes it that much easier to say, I have a beautiful thing at home. I'm not gonna mess that up for a couple of moments of joy and stupidity and just throw it all away. Yep, exactly. Um, so some of the other boundaries that we've set is after a certain time in the night, we do not talk to the opposite sex. So, you know, friend, male friends, female friends, business partners or whatever, we do not speak to the opposite, opposite sex. There is no reason why you need to be speaking to someone's spouse at 10 o'clock in the night. Ooh, that's a booty call. <laughs> exactly. If you call in 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock, 1 o'clock in the morning, you send in text messages. I sometimes I'm offended by people who do that, you know, because I've never done that. Yeah, I, 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 I've never done that either, you know? We've never done that. And um, there's a certain, that's a certain level of respect. And whether or not you, you see it, people will try to do things to see how far they can get with you. And people will have more respect and you will demand respect from people when you set up those boundaries. One of the things I do want to pick it back on just as well, Reba, is that, um, for instance, like I said, we're pros to personal trainers. If I have an attractive woman hit me up and say, Chris, I want you to basically help me build a big, build a bigger booty or basically work on my uh, certain curves or whatever. I'm be like, perfect. I got the greatest program for you. Here's my wife. because She's got a program for that. Or if I have a young lady hit me up about something and I know it's kind of going a little, I can just kind of feel it in my whatever that is kind of going a different way, I'll just introduce her to my wife and let her basically handle that business decision. The stuff that I'm good at basically, the marketing, the digital stuff, that kind of um, that kind of things, the stuff I'm good at or whatever, um, the stuff I'm good at, my wife, she may not be as strong in that, but the stuff that she's very good at, the um, building the websites, basically the internet stuff, basically building the programs, building the apps, that's, that's my weekend, that's what she's strong in. But if I find a person basically kind of coming on to me in a very weird way, 
I just introduce him immediately to my wife and I keep it moving. Exactly, and, and that's just a part of maturity and transparency and communication with your spouse. And uh, the last thing I'll say is that, like I said, we can talk about, we have a lot of boundaries that we've set up for other people, for our marriage, and also between us. We, we have each other's, you know, passcodes and all passwords and all that kind of stuff, but we have respect for each other's personal space. I don't go looking into Chris's phone and he doesn't go looking into my phone just randomly um, because we have that trust, that faith in each other to, to know that, hey, listen, um, we already established that this is a monogamous relationship. I am going to be faithful to you in all ways. I'm not going to accept, um, you know, be flirtatious with other people. I'm only going to be that way towards you. So respecting and having personal space is essential. Yeah, because at the end of the day, while while we are married, we still have to remain as individuals as well so that we can still be the people that we fell in love with, if Absolutely. that makes sense. Absolutely. All right. So the next question is, how do you deal with conflict resolution? I'll, uh, I'll start with this one if you're cool with that, yeah. babe. Um, re remember who you married and why you married them. In my case, like I said, I was a bachelor in the Miami, the Orlando's, the Chicago's, the Phillies, and New York City's. I realize I remember what's out there. I remember what's out here in the bars. I remember what's out here in the lounges. I remember what's out here in this churches, single ministry. I remember, I remember what's out here in the churches. And when you have a good woman, fellas, you hold on to her. So basically, it's quite simple. Respect the individual that God gave you. Respect that person. Basically, love her. Treat her with dignity. Treat her with respect. And that, to me, is basically how I handle conflict resolution. Just like when I was a bachelor, I didn't tolerate women throwing stuff at me and screaming at me and all that kind of stuff. I never talked to my wife that way. And in the same respect, because I don't talk to her that way, she doesn't talk to me that way. Exactly. And one thing we've established in our marriage is that we do not yell at one another. We That's the importance of communication. If there's something that I need to say, I'm not going to yell it at my husband or say things purposely to... On purpose, I said that for a reason, twice, for a reason. Um, I'm not going to purposely hurt my spouse because I'm angry. If I'm, if we are angry at one another for whatever reason, we, what we will say is that I will speak to you when I am calmer, when I'm less angry, when I'm in a, in a better headspace because I don't want to say something that I don't mean and say something that I can't take back because the last thing you want to do is hurt the person that you claim to love. Exactly. And uh, one thing that the one thing that we've established, the, the Bible says, do not let the sun go down on your wrath, right? So in the, even if we still are not on the same page about something, we when we lay down to sleep in the night, Chris always comes and he cuddles me, spoons me, let me know that I am loved and I do the same thing for him because at the end of the day, this argument does not determine whether I stop loving you or how much I love you. Yep. Mm -hmm. And it just, it gets, it's frustrating to jump from relationship to relationship to whatever to whatever. That's frustrating. When you got somebody good, hold on to them. And just like Reba said, at the end of the day, I'm, I'm much happier today than I ever was basically when I was a bachelor. Much happier today. And to all the men out here who are listening to this, I'm telling you right now, eventually the, the parties, <clears throat> the plan, it gets old. And at the end of the day, when you have somebody good, you basically treat that person with the dignity and the respect that they deserve. Yep, amen to that. <clears throat> and uh, this is the last question. <laughs> this is the last question. Um, are you, and it says, did you prioritize marriage? I'll go first with that one. I did not. Uh, I was basically told, uh, you're a good looking guy, you're gonna make a great career, you're gonna make a lot of money because you're studying mechanical engineering, so go out there, uh, live your life, and eventually when it's ready, it's time for you to get married, you'll get married. Um, looking back on that advice, um, there was a lot of, uh, I would just say, damage that I caused and stuff like that over the years, and I learned from the mistakes that I made. The thing I will say about it is this though, when I got serious about marriage around my, 20, around my late 20s, early 30s, I started realizing that a lot of the things that I was taught to look for in a wife, I was not, honestly not seeing out in the uh, dating world or in the church for that matter. So I worked on myself. I got counseling, I did mental therapy. Um, I, I think I've mentioned a couple times in this thing, I got into combat sports, kickboxing, Muay Thai, Jiu Jitsu, mixed martial arts. I would advise every man to do that because when your wife knows, when a woman knows you can protect her, your dating options go up. And I will also say I worked on my career. So when it came time for me to get married, I could tell my wife, don't worry, I have this. So um, I worked on myself. 
And when I got serious about wanting to look for a wife, I started looking at the things that basically... When? Like, like I was in my late 20s. I was in my late 20s, early 30s. When I got serious about around 29, 28, 29, I started knowing what I was looking for. And when I met Reba, I said, okay, this is what I'm looking for. But I knew that because I dated enough women prior to that to know this is not what I'm looking for. Yeah. So, yeah, for me, I did prioritize marriage. I always went in with the... And I, I, for me, I always knew I wanted to be married. So I always dated with the intent to marry. And... Um, I, I said that, you know, by 25, I wanted to be married. By 30, I wanted to have, you know, all my kids. Um, and I wanted to also have my degree, which I do have. And I'm Bio, actually- Biochemistry, STEM yeah. major, stand up, STEM St major, stand up. Listen, them four years, <laughs> you know about that with mechanical engineering. Um, so I always knew, so I, I got my degree, I met Chris. We got married, we're having our first baby, and um, it's all within the time period that I wanted. Now, this is just me. Eh? If you have a different story, that's you, but just know that whether you choose to prioritize marriage or not, those they both come with consequences, good and bad. And you have to weigh them and figure out if those, if those consequences are worth it for you. Yep. So well, like I was saying, everybody, here on Financial Patient, I typically talk about financial leadership. I typically talk about financial literacy. I typically talk about financially emancipating yourself from just this weird, crazy world that we live in. But I'll, I kind of wanted to do this one a little differently. It's Valentine's Day, and uh, I'm just going to tell all the fellas out there, as well as the women as well, it's a lot easier, basically, to build the generational wealth that all of us want. It's a lot easier to build that balanced uh, life that all of us want, that most of us want, rather, um, if you're married to the right person. And it is extremely difficult, basically, to plant your seed in contaminated soil if you want that, um, if you want your seed to basically grow. So uh, find the right people, find the right woman, find the right man, everybody, and uh, happy Valentine's Day. So, uh, yeah. yep. Happy Valentine's. Thanks for joining us. And make sure you like and share this so that uh, more people can, you know, learn a thing or two and just get a different perspective if necessary. Absolutely, absolutely. Alrighty, until the next time. Take care, everybody. Take care. Peace.